What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be having a look at the incendiary shells in COD World War II. Primarily what we're going to be looking at is, are they overpowered? I've been seeing this claim thrown around a lot since the betas actually, and I'm still seeing it pop up every now and then in the community here. So I did want to put this to the test to see if it is in fact overpowered, or if it's even worth using these incendiary shells. So what I did with my test here is I used the combat shotgun and I found out the standard one-shot kill potential. This is your maximum one-shot kill potential, which we also know by the hard stats is 10 meters. This assumes that all of your pellets hit, but I tested this tons of different times to make sure I got that perfectly accurate. Plus, I just happen to know exactly how much 10 meters is on this particular spot of the map. But right here, the red area is your instant one-shot kill. The yellow area is your two-shot kill, and you'll see that it actually ends there. Beyond that yellow bar, you will not be hitting your enemy at all. Your pellets just kind of disappear into thin air. Also, one thing I thought I'd point out here before we get into the incendiary shells is COD World War II shotguns actually do follow suit with Black Ops 3's model of shotguns, and I didn't believe this at first, and this is they use a base damage plus a damage per pellet on top of the base damage. And that might sound really confusing here. Basically how it works is if you hit just one pellet, and with this one we'll just say within six meters, within six meters if you hit one pellet, it's going to be dealing 94 base damage plus two damage per pellet on top of that. So just hitting one pellet within six meters is going to deal 96 damage. This means within six meters with the combat shotgun, if you hit just three out of the eight pellets that you're firing per shot, you are guaranteed to get the kill. And this was actually quite surprising to me. I didn't think it was using the Black Ops 3's model, but then again, the Black Ops 3 model was much more forgiving with the counterpart in Black Ops 3, the KRM. With that shotgun, it was actually a 98 base damage with two damage per pellet on top of that. And what this meant is if you hit just one pellet within those closer ranges, you were guaranteed a one-shot kill. This time, it's not quite as forgiving, but it is a similar system, and this is designed to lead to a lot more consistency with the shotguns in this game. But now that we have that out of the way, let's hop into the incendiary shells. Just in case you guys don't know what the incendiary shells are, maybe you don't have the game yet and you're just looking at videos to see what it's all about. These are the shells that you get when you use a shotgun combined with the expeditionary division. It's kind of like your special weapon attachment, kind of like the bayonet when you use a rifle with infantry or the suppressor when you use an SMG with airborne. You do have to manually load these shells and when you have these shells, when you shoot an enemy, it lights them on fire and has the potential to burn them to death. This sounds really powerful on paper, but what a lot of people don't realize is this actually significantly reduces your ranges. And I think this is going to surprise a lot of people. Let's have a look at that range reduction right here. This is what it looks like with the incendiary shells. So the red portion of the bar, this is still your instant one hit kill potential. So the moment you pull that trigger, they're dead instantly. They don't burn to death afterwards, they just drop dead. The orange part of the bar, that middle part of the bar, this is your one shot burn potential. So you still only need one shot to get the kill, but they're not going to die instantly. They're going to be burning to death within a couple of seconds. This means within that window, you're still going to be getting the kill, but they have an opportunity to kill you before they go down. And then finally, the yellow part of the bar is your maximum two shot kill range. And as you can see there, that is noticeably reduced from the maximum two shot kill range when you're using regular shotgun shells. Now the big thing that I wanted to point out here is notice even your one shot burn kill potential is lower than your instant one shot kill potential with the regular shotgun shells or the buckshot. And if that's not enough to convince you, realize that that little orange window that you have there with that range, that's often going to lead to a kill trade. It seems like almost every single time I'm within that range, either if I'm using the shotgun or the enemy's using that shotgun with incendiary shells, both of us die almost every single time. The amount of time it takes for you to burn to death after being hit within that range is almost always enough time for the person to kill you back. And this leads to a lot of frustrating situations. And I can kind of see where a lot of the complaints initially came from that this is overpowered. In reality, I think it's really annoying, but it's not overpowered. Just realize in those situations where you get shot by incendiary shells and you burn to death, you actually got that little bit of extra life that you wouldn't have gotten if they were using standard shotgun shells. So anytime you have gotten a kill trade against a shotgun or using incendiary shells, just realize if he wasn't using those incendiary shells, chances are you would have been dead instantly and you wouldn't have had that opportunity to kill him in the first place. So this is something that I had to kind of rewire my brain a little bit with because I honestly, I did get annoyed by these incendiary shells when the beta first came out until I realized that they're actually not nearly as powerful as these standard shotgun shells. 
So this is why I actually never use the incendiary shells with the shotguns unless there's some order or daily challenge or something that I need to complete while using incendiary shells. In any other situation, I'm not loading them if I'm using it with expeditionary or I'm just gonna straight up use my shotguns with the airborne division so I can get around the map a little bit faster and I don't have to bother at all with those incendiary shells. So there we have it. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video on the incendiary shells in COD World War II. I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments section below. Did you initially think these were overpowered and this changed your mind on them? Or did you realize after using the incendiary shells that they weren't quite as powerful as the standard shotgun shells? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.